Welcome everybody to my YouTube channel. I thought I'd do another paint and talk video. I've already painted, now I'm just talking over the video as I watch watch back. And I'll try to tell you what I was deciding on the spot, what I had planned, and so on. This canvas started out as a... Um, I don't know, I did a couple of large sunflowers on it. That's why you see some some yellow in the background there of the petals. But I wasn't happy that it happens to some paintings when they uh when they don't make the make the cut. I uh <laughs> I just end up painting over them. So this one's turning into a landscape. I had a photo of um I think it was Holly Beach in Louisiana that uh just had a sparse landscape with some houses on stilts and that was pretty cool looking and that was my first idea to do that so I started in on that there was a road in the photograph that's the diagonal line coming down and the perspective is off because I ended up you know kind of cropping in on the photo so where the photo was taken, the road they were standing in the road. So that throws off the way the lines go if you move the frame of reference to a different spot, but keep the it's the same photo. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out how the road would go, and you'll see me mess with that a little later as well. Um, but now I'm cutting back into the with the sky on the uh, on the horizon line and the houses in the background that's a, a quick way to uh, do extra painting in the negative space and get kind of a quicker result because you can kind of see what it's going to look like Again, these two houses were on stilts, so I'm kind of indicating that by, uh, by having the sky appear through those stilts. I'm not concerned with accuracy, I'm just uh, getting the gist of, of the scene. I guess when I started the painting, I did have the idea of, uh, um, in the last video, I talked about how these early stages are kind of like notes for the painting, uh, since most all of it will be painted over by each successive stage of the painting, um, I kind of think of the early parts as uh, notes are indicators of where things will go and then as I paint each layer I kind of figure it out as I go uh, as far as correcting what I've already painted uh, and figuring out the next steps so with that with that idea in mind when I was painting this one I did have the idea that uh, that it might be cool to to make actual notes on the painting and have that exist in the final image. I still wasn't sure about it I think at this point. Um, I was just going to see how the painting went. <laughs> if it was working too well as a as kind of a standard painting without added text I think I was going to go with that. Uh, but I, at this point I was already, already realizing that without much of anything in the foreground uh, I, I, I kind of had the sense that I would need to make some kind of bold choices. So that's, that's uh, I think, the main reason I went with red down there. And because I went with red down there, I needed it elsewhere in the painting, or it would kind of lack a little unity, or lack some balance. Anytime I add a color somewhere in the painting, I tend to to try to add it elsewhere, even if it's in a smaller amount or 
or an altered color. See how that road is very odd looking and actually it's turning into more of a sidewalk looking thing at this point. So that's on my mind as well. Here I'm going in with a China marker which is like a, a wax pencil. It's a crayon for artists I guess. <laughs> and uh, I'm kind of drawing in the details of the house in the background. Um, I'll often use that to uh, as another step in the in the evolution of a painting just to find the details and to correct lines. Um, some of that ends up in the final painting. Most of it ends up painted over most of the time. But I have black and I have white china markers. And you'll see in a moment I'll start in on uh, on that idea of making notes on the canvas, I, I thought, well, I'll just, I think I even wrote notes on a landscape here. Um, kind of experimenting with the idea while I was at it, because the foreground, as it is now, is unfinished. And if I didn't like it, it's easy enough just to uh, paint over it. Um, I don't know, stream of consciousness took over and I just uh, kept writing. <laughs> it's a bit stormy outside, by the way. It's starting to rain now. I don't know if that's going to affect the audio quality, but maybe it'll just put you to sleep. As long as I have electricity, I'm fine with it. <laughs> And really, a lot of this really just is stream of consciousness. Uh, some of it I uh, I connected with the notes theme where I would kind of act like it's making notes on the painting, uh, talking about like labeling things like the sky and, and things. I think I referenced perspective when I write along the edge of the road. Now I'm using the white china marker. It shows up a little better in some spots. Some of that, and I can't see the details from my little, what I'm looking at now in the video, but uh, some of the, uh, some of the writings I, I, I do some uh, writing, and I, th I think I recently I did a, a poem, and so some of that was parts of the poem, but most of it is just kind of off the off the cuff. Um, words. I like the more trees needed here. <laughs> don't stop dancing. I don't dance, by the way, but just thought it was fun. And at this point, I really wasn't sure if I liked it or not. I think I even uh, posted that on my Instagram or wrote that that I'll prob not probably but that I would paint over it if I uh, once I analyzed the painting uh, that I would paint over it if I didn't uh, care for it. Because as it sits it's still kind of an underpainting unless I want that severely abstracted look. Which turns out I, I it does kind of end up like that, but spoiler alert, I do keep all the words on there. I, I walked away from the painting for a little while and I came back and and I still didn't like that road and then I realized well it, it actually is more the size or the look of a train track perhaps. So I s started in on the railroad ties. Ended up liking that a lot better.
and it added a little more interest to that side of the painting in the foreground. Ended up calling this painting Notes on a Landscape, and then kind of the subtitle is Everyone Relax, because that's the most prominent phrase in the bottom corner in the red there. Frankly, I don't even remember writing it, because uh, I wasn't thinking about what the words meant. I was just kind of writing somewhat neutral words and phrases. <laughs> I had ideas of of writing so many words over each other that you couldn't make out whole phrases, but in the end that just seemed like extra work and I think the effect is good enough as it is. <laughs> also decided, uh, since there was a lot of open space in this painting, to kind of give a border around the edges, just a, a black border. That's what I'm doing now. So I'm thinking about continuing this series well I'm <laughs> I'm thinking about calling this a series notes on a landscape and and then subtitling it whatever ends up being the prominent phrase or word uh, I don't know the idea seems pretty cool and it kind of I mean, I'm sure there's something out there like it from some artist, but I haven't really seen much like it other than, you know, this kind of the graffiti look. The one thing about it that did bother me was the fact that, you know, since it's the wax pencil, it kind of creates a texture as it's writing, and I thought maybe using a paint marker paint pen might work better might give you a, might give me a smoother line I ended up trying my wife's paint markers because it can paint on plastic which is kind of what acrylic is when it's dry but I don't know, after trying it I didn't really care for it uh, mainly because these markers were near the end of their life cycle and they kind of were getting gummed up and uh, yeah, they didn't. I didn't really care for it. I don't know how long they last anyway, so I'll probably stick with the pencil, the wax pencil look. Right now, I'm just adding some more detail. Added the the, uh, the background sky beneath that second house to make the stilts. Now I'm adding a bit of a roof, going with kind of an orangey red to make it look like a rusty tin roof. I'm no longer I'm no longer looking at the reference photo. That was only at the very beginning. I mean there's not much to it. I generally use reference photos uh on most all of my paintings, but uh but tend to treat them as a jumping off point and when I get stuck on a painting, I'll I'll go back to it and look for details that could help me out uh, so unless it's a commissioned painting of a beloved pet or person <laughs> in which case I would you know stick with the photo a little more stringently but but I usually use the reference photo just as uh, as a reference not as a uh, uh, a strict thing I must follow. Going in with some darker clouds, I, I needed the 
or wanted the sky to be uh, a little more dramatic. And maybe it's just because I was hearing the rain and everything at the time as well. But as you'll see, I kind of overdo it with the dark, and so I go back with light. And then it's not working so well, and I end up uh, in a minute here watering down the paint, kind of to scrub it out a little bit, and which gives me the idea of letting the paint drip, which I've I've done plenty of times on my paintings. I like the look of dripping paint uh, on on my paintings, although it could be a crutch and and gimmicky. So I try not to do too much of it. Usually, when I do it, I uh, I use it sparingly, and 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 like with with this one, you'll see I end up kind of wiping up some of it only leaving a few of the drips. There's kind of two modes of creating that I go through. While I'm painting, it's generally the, uh, I don't know what word would be good for it, uh, the the emotional, intuitive side, uh, the artist just doing his thing. Um, generally, that's uh, applying techniques, um, balancing color correcting shapes, this sort of thing. And then that intuitive artist side has to give way to the more analytical decision-making side, the thinking side. And a lot of, a lot of times it's uh, back and forth. As I'm painting, I pause, step back, like I'm doing here looking at how the drips look overall then I return and this is I'm just kinda of wiping out this one with some water because it's all those drips are still wet so they can usually be wiped away pretty easily analyzing what I'm doing as I'm doing it is uh, is difficult to do but uh, but I do notice myself going into these different modes of creating uh, probably mostly in the thinking logical mode rather than the creative intuitive mode I don't really notice it too much then that's more of the what they call the flow state or the I don't know what else you call it. Where time kind of disappears and you you're just painting or creating or songwriting or writing, you know, any whatever art it is, you're kind of lost in the uh in the act of it. That's what I'm calling the creative mode, the intuitive But without the logical, um, demanding, thinking side, it, I assume, would end up in chaos. <laughs> it kind of has to be a balance, I think. And here I'm balancing the yellow that's on the right side and putting it a little bit on the left near the, the tracks. Doing some last minute balancing. 
I think that's about it. I don't think I do much else. I appreciate uh, you stopping by to watch the video. Check out my website. It's wesforman.com. W-E-S-S-F-O-R-E-M-A-N.com. And I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for future paintings. Thanks.